How do you take a business that's been in operation for over 30 years and double, yes, double its profits in just 12 months? Plus, we show you how talking to yourself can actually be good for your business. Welcome to the Trading's Business Show, helping you get off the tools and into true business ownership so you can spend more time doing the things that matter most. Now, here are your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Michaela Clark. Are we saying hello? Is this thing on? Hey. Hello. Welcome to the Tradies Business Show and another great episode for you today. We've got a, a really cool interview with uh, someone that, that I know reasonably well, but he's a plumber, a father, a soccer player, and a mountain bike rider. And the thing I like about uh, this interview in particular was just how open our guest was to talk about all aspects of his business. Yeah, and covering everything from how technology's changed his business to working with the family business to service to how to treat your employees. It was great. And even uh, how to take over the reins from your old man when he's had the business for 31 years. So that uh, that still does my head in that yeah. this thing's been running for so long. Great family success story. Absolutely. Let's get into it. Yes, so today's guest is Ben Perrin from Adrian Perrin Plumbing. Uh, So Ben is uh, Adrian's son, surprise, surprise, but um, took over the business, the family business, uh, after it had been in operation for 31 years, and Ben's been in the driver's seat for the last four years or so. Uh, Ben rates himself as fairly unremarkable, but uh, I know Ben reasonably well, and I wouldn't say that's necessarily accurate. He's uh, he's come through the ranks as a labour in the construction industry, hospitality worker, uh, driver, so had a, a various uh, number of roles. And since taking over the business, he's really done some pretty amazing stuff with it and really excited to be getting uh, some of his insights today. So welcome to the studio, Ben. Thanks for having me, guys. No worries. So, mate, can you tell us a bit about um, how you got into the business? I know you, you took over your dad's business a little while ago, but uh, how did all that come about, mate? Yeah, so uh, in 2002, I was working um, as a, a produce courier driver, and my father and my brother were in business together, and um, they were finding things very busy, and they needed a, a third wheel, so to speak, and offered me a position to come and join. So I jumped at it and uh, always wanted to get in the family business, but um, never found a, an opportunity, and then the one was presented, so I got into it. Yeah. And so what's the secret to a good family business? Um, I, I guess knowing your place, yeah, <laughs> uh, respecting other people's positions and, and, and letting those decisions on a business uh, level happen and, and just not allowing the, the family side of things to probably come into it really. And so I guess like, over 30 years in the plumbing industry, I'm sure that your family would have seen a lot of changes throughout the years. What's some of the big things about, you know, doing business say 10 years ago and now? Um, so, I mean, we've mainly specialised in uh, re- real estate property maintenance and body corporate uh, maintenance. Um, and the big thing for us is the, from the property management perspective is they need reliability and they need service and they need feedback and they all want it yesterday. Um, so that's probably where we found our niche is that we were able to deliver that service to them as well as being a traditional tradie, I, I would say, so... And what do you think's been the success there that you've been able to deliver that service? Um, probably just being open and, and honest, I suppose, not trying to sell uh, someone a, a pig when you're telling them it's a cow. <laughs> um, just be upfront and honest with them. If you can't do something, you can't do it, uh, and just be open with that. So um, that's probably been our, our perspective and, and the fact that we've been around for long enough um, we got comfortable with the fact that we knew what we were doing and we were doing quite well. So, Has there been any, uh, I guess, tough times, Ben? Um, I know we've been through GFCs or we're still going through it perhaps, but um, have you had any major challenges with the transition into the role you're in now? Um, I guess that historically with the business, uh, my father started out doing more building construction type um, plumbing work. And I guess in that industry, uh, they, you know, people can go broke and you can lose a lot of money. And I think that those couple of experiences uh, probably put my father off from going down that path um, as opposed to serving the general public and um, some smaller property management teams. 
Um, so that's been a big one to overcome because um, for me, I found a, an opportunity for us to dive back into a little bit of construction um, at certain points and there was a little bit of friction there while we were still in partnership to try and get that to happen. Um, so, But I was respectful of wh- where my father was coming from and I guess I felt that there would come a time where I would have my own chance to maybe have a shot at that um, and that's pretty much where we are today. And so how's the business changed since you took over? Um, well, it was 2002, it's 2014 now. Um, a lot has changed. Technology is huge. Um, the internet used to wind it up in 2002 and, and get it to go. Uh, now, if you aren't internet based or offering some kind of, um, on site, uh, connectivity, uh, you, it's, it's very hard to maintain service delivery, uh, speedy and, and economical for the customer. Yeah, so one of the big areas I work with is creating mobile workforces where they have access to all the information they need on the job and just the way it can increase productivity and streamline the systems really can impact on a business. So talk us through how that made a difference to the way you operate. Yeah, so so we've been probably for the last three to four years um, through working with uh, Warwick and, and um, uh, other people on our business um, – We've implemented a lot more systems in place and procedures, so if something fell down, we could find the answer to it or someone else could find the answer to it. And up to relatively up to uh, middle of this year, it was still fairly well paper-based. Um, and the problem is when that's of that nature, you've got to have that piece of paper with everything on it at the time it's ready to go out the door with your, with your techs. So what the internet does for us or the, or the technology does for us is that um, – if guys are already out in sight, we can feed them real-time information as it comes in, um, and sometimes that information is critical. Yeah. And so if someone's looking at making the switch over, going from a paper-based system to a more mobile, cloud-friendly technology space, what's some of your key lessons, you think, in making that transition? Be patient um, and be open. Open to learning. It's it's uh, it's changing. It changes just when you get something down right, it changes on you. And you can't get frustrated with that and just say, well, it's too hard. I, it's not going to work for me. I'm going to go back to paper. You've got to persist with it. And if you push hard enough and long enough, you will get through that phase and you will know what you're doing. And, and it'll, it'll, it'll take on and you'll be glad you did. Yep. Ben, I'm, I'm keen to just touch on the family business side of things again because it's something I know a lot of, a lot of uh, tradies struggle with. And it's a pretty common story is to, to sort of take over a family business or get involved in a family business. Do you remember the conversation you had with your dad about uh, you stepping in and, and really taking the reins? Yeah. Um, at the time, my, my father and my brother were partners in the business and um, they invited me to come on as a, as a third partner straight in. So it was a really good opportunity to get straight in on, at a partner level. Um, and their idea at the time was not so much for me to uh, be a tradesman in the business, but probably more take on the business side of it. Um, I guess um, that was a wonderful thing for them to say and have me do. But I, for myself, I needed to know the industry and I felt I needed to do the trade to be able to go on and, 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 and develop the business and, and take on the role they actually wanted me to take on. So um, so I persisted with asking to get through a, a, a traditional apprenticeship, uh, which I did, um, and we did it uh, speedily. And, and once we had that out of the way, we got onto the deal with, you know, getting this business moving forward so um yeah it was it was good in that sense but um i guess i had to at some times fight for my um for my own existence and rights you know and and how was that handled uh by your dad mate um uh, my father's a, a he's fairly reserved sort of a person um he 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 didn't really um <clears throat> wasn't opposed to it really much at all um, I think it, obviously having an apprentice, you have a lot of time out with, with TAFE and stuff like that and running small business anytime you've got guys away, uh, you know, up to 12 weeks a year sometimes, um, can be a heavily, heavy, heavy burden to make sure that the balances are staying in place. Um, but we fought through that and, uh, now we're at the other side and, and now he's re- moved on retired. And I think probably now he's, as he looks at the business now, I think he sees, um, see w- what the ideas were and why we had to do certain things, and and now the, the it, things are coming to fruition as we speak. So, would you say being in business or going into business with family is uh, is a good idea, mate, or a bad idea? 
Yeah, I, I've got. I, I think. Um, I think it comes down to people. I, I see businesses every day where they're family orientated and they don't work. I see ones that they do work. I see workplaces where uh, people aren't related at all and they still don't work. Um, it comes down to the people and the personalities. And if if you're open and you're respectful of the people in your team, and that that's probably the key word, team. You you got to operate as a team. You can't do it by yourself. Um, and if you can operate that way, then you you really should be able to f- uh, push through most most problems. And so how big's your team at the moment? At the moment, we're a team of five. Um, we have three full-time tradies. Uh, myself, who is now feeling a bit more of a managerial role, I still am on the tools um, when I have to be because um, we're still growing. We're still getting a, a quite of an influx of new customers to our client base. Um, and we also have a, a full-time office admin person who's currently um, on leave at the moment with, having, uh, with baby duty, so... <laughs> And what do you think are some of the reasons that the business is growing and you're getting those new leads in? What strategies have you put in place to, to grow the business? Um, probably not not pandering to the barbecue talk. Um, when you talk to other tradies at, um, at, the, at the plumbing supply sh- stores or the hardware stores, um, you know, you, you got to be careful that their experiences aren't forced onto you. Uh, if something didn't work for them, it doesn't mean it can't work. Um, I quite often hear that you've got to either go big or you've got to go small. Or you can't go in between. It doesn't happen. And I was actually very curious about that dynamic. I so said I wanted to really r- look into what is it that makes a small, medium business so hard to do. Why? Why it doesn't happen? Why is this mentality out there that it's either you stay by yourself on the tools or you get fifty guys underneath you and you take a lot more stress and risk? So that's what I was very inter- interested in. And the other thing I um, I'm interested in is that I guess when someone tells me I can't do something, um, I, I'd probably like to take that and, and prove that you can do it. Um, I guess I'm, I'm just not going to die wondering. I'm going to I'll try it for myself, and if if in the end it, it turns out they were right, well then they were right. And know? so, what do you think's made you successful at that three to four van mark? Um, understanding, I mean, it's a it's a 35 year old business this year. Um, for the last 12 years I've been a part of it um, and a, a key witness for the 35 years while my father's running it. So I've got a good understanding of, of its service delivery, who its customer base is, what our niche is, I suppose, or if you could say that. Um, so on a managerial perspective running uh, a team of other guys, I understand w- what their needs are out in the field um, and trying to get them to understand what our needs are in the office space and, and bringing the two together, that's the challenge, getting the communication right, the systems right in place between the field and the office. And, and if you have enough systems in place, you can, you can actually do it. Ben, I know you don't like to uh, talk about yourself too much, mate, but can you just give our listeners a bit of a feel for the business as well? I know you talked about how many employees you've got, but uh, you, know, you, know, you don't have to share numbers if you're not comfortable, but maybe growth over the last uh, three or four years? Yeah, growth is, um, I think... Uh, Two years ago, it has doubled uh, gross uh, gross revenue. So we've we've gone from around about uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars to over five hundred thousand dollars the last financial year. So we've doubled our, our gross revenue. Um, our net profits uh, maintain come down a little bit, um, which we're working hard on now to to bring that back up. Um, uh, we ha- we do employ our tradies as um, full time pe- uh, employment. Uh, prospects because we feel that um, it gives them value, it gives them peace of mind that they actually are a part of a team. Um, they're not just used as casuals or contractors and then we just use them as we need them. Um, and, and from that giving to them, they give back to us uh, sevenfold because we really are trying to build a a, a, a business um, model, I suppose, where it is sustainable, where everyone chips in and everyone takes out. And so growing a business like that, and that's a really quick increase, you know, doubling year on year, what, how important is it to know your numbers and know your financials to grow your business? Yeah, well, probably the best thing we did um, was early on in the piece, um, and it was something I tried to do when uh, my, my father and my brother were still in the business, was um, get on to a business consultant or a business coach and get them to come through the business have a look at it, assess it, and look at ways that we can either improve it or or even maybe just pull it, pull it together a bit better. So I guess once I got my hands on it straight away, um, when everyone sort of moved on, that was the first thing I did. And we worked with Warwick um, for the last two years 
to work on systems, work on the financials, make sure that we had the foundations right uh, before we got any grand ideas about expansions or, or anything like that. What would you say uh, it was the toughest part of that decision, mate, like bringing someone in from outside to help in the business? I mean, whether it's a, a VA or a secretary in the office or a consultant, I mean, what, what sort of goes through your head when you're making that decision? I think like most small business owners, cost is cost is the thing that overrides most decisions a lot of the time, whether the affordability, whether to do it or not. Um and I guess if you've got the right salesperson, they can show you that you that you actually will grow your revenue with the aid of those investments of, say, a business coach or, or a VA. Um, so, like I said, I'm very open to trying things. Um, you've got to give everything its, its opportunity. And, and I, I actually believe in the fact that um, sometimes to make money or to grow, you have to invest and you have to put something aside. So... Um, I think that's probably the thing that most people in our field or our industry would struggle with. Um, me personally, I think it was just a case of well, I wanted to do it anyway and I just needed my wife, who's also my partner in the business, to say, support me and go, yep, let's do that. And um, it's the best thing we ever did. So one thing I also noticed is, um, since we've been talking, is how you niched. I think that's so critical for a lot of businesses. So talk us through how that came about and how you've found that to help grow the business by by targeting your market a little bit more. Yeah, so I think a mistake uh, people ke- could make is that um, – they feel that growth in their business must come from adding things on all the time or expand, expanding into new fields, um, whether that's trying to uh, make themselves a bit different in the marketplace. I don't know why, but um, for us, we offered enough services for what we did. Um, maintenance plumbing uh, by itself is quite a large field um, and ranges from quite a number of different services. And we, we offered about... We should probably still offer probably around about 10 different services and that was enough services for us to offer the public. What we felt we needed to do was maximise each and every one of those uh, incrementally uh, so the overall picture would be an increase across the board. So that's what our focus has been and, and probably the niche for us is um, uh, definitely that maintenance renovation type uh, field and we were doing that a long time before the GFC hit and the building turn went down. Um, and that's where we found a lot of new construction uh, contractors coming into the maintenance renovation field. But the problem they had was the lack of communication skills and service um, systems in place to be able to deal with multiple customers uh, throughout the day. So what would be your advice to people starting out in business now if they wanted to <clears throat> start a trade business? I'm, I'm always encouraging. I think give it a go. You'll, it'll be the best thing you ever do. Um, I've seen some young guys come through our business who um, just don't quite understand the role they play in the business, in the, in the business. And it's probably not until you take on yourself you fully grasp what's what's at stake. Um, so it's it's taking on your own business is a wonderful opportunity you of self growth and, and exploration. Um, and you learn so much through that. It's very testing. It's very challenging, but it's very rewarding at the same time. And I think it doesn't matter whether you work for someone or work for yourself, you're going to go through those kinds, kinds of dilemmas daily anyway, so why not do it and do it for yourself? One thing many trade-based businesses don't do and should be doing is face-to-face networking. There's a real fear out there in the industry. How have you found that networking has changed your business? Yeah, it was something um, mentioned to me by Warwick about um, possibly implementing as far as our marketing strategy. Um, it, it was definitely a challenge for me to do. I, I certainly felt um, I was walking into a room full of people who knew their place in the business world and maybe I didn't know mine. Um, but it wasn't long before I felt um, they were there to hear about what I have to offer. And it was interesting to have some of them actually say, well, that was, um, it's good to have someone from your, from your industry come and talk about these sorts of things. So um, it is it is a thing I think a lot of uh, tradies probably suffer from is a little bit of maybe it's lack of confidence or, or just public speaking type thing, but it certainly helped um, t- with the confidence and being able to uh, speak to customers, uh, clients, uh, um, and also just you know let people know about who we are and what we do. And so, what tips would you give guys out there wanting to get out and network? Um, Probably not worry so much about what it is you need to sell or taking it from a sales-based opinion. Just 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 talk to people, listen to what they're asking you, 
um, and offer them the answers that you've got within you. You know the answers. You've been doing it long enough. Most traders have been doing their field and are specialized, specialized in what they do, so they know what they're doing. Um, it's probably just maybe just listening to what uh, people are wanting um, and just offer them the, the advice, and in time you, you'll, you'll grow with that. Because I know one electrician I know, he went to a Chamber of Commerce meeting and he absolutely hated it. It took him years to go, but he finally went. And out of 40 people in the room, he was the only tradie in the room. And now after 12 months of going every month, he has every one of those other 40 businesses as customers. His whole business now is built on word of mouth. So for a $30 fee each month to go to a meeting, that's his whole marketing budget now because his word of mouth has been so powerful in that community. So it really is something that, that's critical and guys just have to go out and do really. Yeah, people, I mean, it's been said before, people buy into you. Uh, they don't buy your business, they buy into you as a person. And the more people know you and understand you and can trust you, they will happily use you. Um, it's as simple as that. Um, people don't use you most of the time because they just don't know you or don't know you exist. Yeah. And I'm sure over 30 years you've had a great word of mouth for your business. How, what other areas have you marketed on online or anything else? Yep, so we don't have too much advertising, marketing, so to speak, that we invest in. Um, websites, one for us. Um, but again, because we have an established word of mouth sort of um, history, um, that still feeds in very well for us today. I mean, I know people say it all the time, word of mouth is the best form of marketing you can have. It really is. Um, you do the right job by people, you you do the right thing, it, it spreads like wildfire and it has for us. And one thing also is really key is presentation and you're here today with your hat on and your company shirt. It just makes such a difference, those small things, can it? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I, I think about what I would want uh, when someone knocks at my door to offer a service and um, I guess if the guy walks in with his dog and his thongs and, and, and glue all over his shirt, I'm gonna, it, it says to me what sort of a job am I going to get here? Um, so I th it's all part of that presentation and it's consistent, you know, I look this way, the guys look exactly the same and whether it be me turn up on the door, one of the other guys, um, customers straight away can relax that they're going to get the same level of service uh, from any one of us. Never miss an episode. Subscribe to Tradies Business Show in iTunes. So Ben, what's next for Adrian Perrin Plumbing, mate? More of the same, really. Um, we, we're just, we're just still trying to, uh, bring it all together. I don't know if that's uh, ever going to be a case where we'll have it fully in place or whether uh, this thing is an ever-changing beast, and I, I tend to think that the latter is what it is. Um, but we're going to keep on with what we're doing, but we've sort of ventured back out towards a bit more of the new construction field um, and target more niche builders. Uh, we don't want to do every man's work. We want to do um, some specialised stuff. Um, because we know we can deliver the service, the on time, the reliability, the cost effectiveness to those builders, which ultimately if we make their life easier, um, we make everyone's life easier and, and we all grow because of it. And what's the one thing you think that makes you stand out from all the plumbers out there? <laughs> I, I don't know. That's probably a question best left to our customers, I suppose. Um, I, I don't know if I would like to marry myself up against competition sometimes uh, it's, it's good to feel that you are doing some things your competitors aren't and you feel a little bit more organized but um i guess i like to feel that we are bringing professionalism to the industry especially on the sunshine coast where the industry is um is still a little bit unprofessional in some ways um in 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 in, in looks um in operations you know is the stories out there of guys who still are not getting paid their own super and things like that it's it's uh, it's a funny sort of a ball game like that so to bring that professionalism up into it and show other people around that you can run a successful business on a place like, in the place like the sunshine coast uh, i guess that's probably where where i sort of look at it from so we'd all love to turn back time if you could what would be one thing you do differently in the last five years to grow the business um <clears throat> Look, probably, I probably wouldn't change anything to be honest. Um, I, th I think we've we've made the right decision in scaling it back and getting somebody else to l uh, look at it from an outside perspective. It brought some different uh, perspective to it, um, and we've created the foundations now where we feel that we can now start to sort of um, uh, uh, push on and, and prosper a little bit more. Um, yeah, not really sure. I mean, you know, we all have different staff issues. I mean, some guys are good, some guys are bad, but I guess you've got to learn from all those things and make it out. I mean, our business is essentially problem-solving, like I'm sure a lot of businesses are, and if you focus on the problems, um, you generally aren't looking at the solutions. So, 
So, mate, I've got a really uh, serious question for you, Ben. <clears throat> You're a fan of the, uh, the round ball code of football. I, I just have to ask, mate, is it fair dinkum when those blokes start rolling around on the ground and, and grabbing at their shins? Like, are they really hurt or are they just hamming it up? Yeah, um, look, there's very much a, a bit of European influence in that in the um, European man, uh, and it comes across. Um, so, look, I think t- to their defence, though, you've got to re- understand these guys are travelling qu- at quite a speed, and um, for someone to kick out their foot and catch a stud can hurt. <laughs> it sounded, <laughs> sounded like a bit of justification there, mate. <laughs> yeah. have, you ever, have you ever clutched at your crotch or your, your shins or something uh, just to draw a penalty, mate? Uh, oh, every now and then we have to we have to milk it. <laughs> uh, thanks, mate. So one thing we like to uh, ask all our guests is if you had 250 tradies in a room, what's the one thing that you'd love them to learn from you? Um, uh, probably focus on, on inward um, looking more so than outward looking. Um, people can get caught up in looking at what the competitors are doing and think they need to do the same. And I guess you've got to... The self-exploration thing, like I mentioned earlier, I think that path that you're forced upon as a business owner um, really forces you to to look at yourself and what you need to do. Um, And I think if people probably spent more time probably looking and asking those questions about themselves, um, that they'd probably get a little little bit more um, solace from that, I suppose, than than uh, looking elsewhere for the answers because ultimately you're you are responsible for what you what you produce in the world. So. Great, thanks. So how, how can people find out more about you? Um, so they can go to our website, uh, which is uh, Um and they can get on there and there's full details and a bit of a history of the business and um, see how good-looking our mob we are. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, mate. Well, look, it's uh, been great having you in the studio, Ben. Always great to talk to you, buddy, and, uh, yeah, really uh, heartwarming to see the results that you guys are, are knocking out with the business, mate. Yeah, thank you guys for having me today and um, to everyone out there, have a go. Great, thanks. So another awesome interview with, uh, I don't like calling them case studies because it makes them sound like, you know, we've got them on the operating table <laughs> and we're sort of opening them up to have a look on the inside. But That's right. It's a little bit what it's like, but uh, great interview there with Ben Perrin from Adrian Perrin Plumbing, which is uh, which is his dad's name. Um, top three takeaways for, for us from that, uh, my two were um, technology. So actually using technology in your trade business, it, it, I see it time and again, it really can transform a business um, from hard work to, uh, to something that generates good income with decent leverage, um, gets a team working more effectively. Uh, and the other one was the barbecue talk. I really liked how Ben said, uh, stop listening to other people's stories because that really is their thing. You know, don't get dragged into what's going on at the barbecue or at the local, uh, you know, hardware store or, or plumbing supplies or electrical wholesalers. So. That's right. It's all about creating your own journey. And totally. only you can do that. Absolutely. So my other big takeaway, which I love banging on about, is networking. You know, <laughs> guys aren't doing it and it's a gold mine out there. It doesn't cost anything, just a bit of your time and commitment. But really, there's nothing to be worried about. Just go and be yourself. That's all it is. So yep. go, network. And don't forget, if you've got any questions for us, please go to the Tradies Business Show website at tradiesbusinessshow.com and there's a little uh, doodad there where you can leave us a voicemail so you can record your voice. I know that scares the crap out of most people, but please go and do it. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, Leave us a question and we'll answer them on future episodes. And so you don't miss any more of those future episodes, make sure to subscribe on iTunes and also follow us on Stitcher. And if you want to find out more about today's guests or find out anything more about Warwick or I, visit the tradiesbusinessshow.com website and everything will be there for you. You've been listening to the Tradies Business Show with Warwick Bidwell and Michaela Clark. Want to get off the tools and into true business ownership? Find out how at tradiesbusinessshow.com. Uh, we probably should have. Okay. okay. Um, Hooray. See you later.